Are you new to VHS and you have no idea how to get better at the game? Well, here are some tips for you. One of the most important things about VHS is sound. Since, compared to Dead by Daylight and other asymmetrical games, usually monsters and also survivors can tell where the characters are depending on chase music or different scratch marks on the ground, in VHS it is less about this and more about just listening out for sounds coming your way. When a monster is near, in most cases you'll be able to hear some stomping sounds, usually before you actually hear the chase music. The chase music really only happens when they're in really close proximity. One thing that I learned very quickly is that monsters can get you very easily since there isn't really any kiting in this game. But since this game is less about kiting and more about hiding and using your weapons to escape, if you get found in the early game you are going to get down pretty quickly. So once you hear a monster stomping your way, it's a really good idea for you to start running or at least start walking quietly towards an area where you think the monster won't follow you. If you walk quietly, they won't completely know if you're actually in that area at all in the first place, but if you start running they will know that you're in the area. But you will have a head start on them. This is something that beginners don't usually do. They kind of hang around and as soon as they hit the monster, they kind of panic and hide somewhere. When you're faced with two options, either craft a weapon or go and find yourself a healing station or maybe find yourself a friend who can heal you, then you need to decide which one is the best case scenario. In most situations, it's better to go and craft yourself a weapon because if a monster comes your way and finds you before you get any heals, you are going to be down anyway. But if you have a weapon with you, you can defend yourself even at half health. So this weapon can help you go to the healing station or to find that friend. The only situation where this wouldn't be the case is if you do have a friend nearby when you are at half health and you have this decision, when you're at one stage from being knocked down. So in this case, it probably is a good idea to get healed by your friend and then craft yourself something. Weapons just give you that peace of mind that can help you just in general keep yourself alive for a little bit longer, even if you aren't doing too well health-wise. Most people start to panic when they have a finished weapon because they're not really sure what to do now. What you should do when you finish a weapon is try to meet up with someone else without a weapon to be their bodyguard. This isn't always the case but in most cases if there's a friend or your teammate who's pinging you that they're making a weapon and they aren't too far away then you should probably go and be their bodyguard. This is a really good suggestion when you're going against monsters for example like Puppet Master or other future ones that I don't know about. By being their bodyguard they can craft their weapon without having to worry too much about the monster coming and the monster can't really stop you from having two weapons in the match. Once they finish their weapon you can now both go and hunt the monster together and just having teammates can make it much harder for the monster to deal with since you can slow them down, stun them and then hit them with deadly weapons. Now let's say that you actually want to get the monster with your weapon. What are some tips that you can use for that? Well if you have a weapon it's a really good idea to try and ambush the monster. It sounds much easier than it actually is. So one of the best things to do to try and ambush the monster is hiding around corners or doorways that lead to main hallways. Monsters that are lower tier are going to usually be walking down corridors without too many issues or worries. The higher they get, the more conscious they will be of corners in the map in general. In lower tiers and lower MMR, monsters will usually just be walking down the corridor. So if you're hiding around the doorway at the end of the corridor and then you pop out with your weapon, there isn't much that the monster can do unless they use some way of protecting themselves, for example a howl or a shield ability. The monster can't go and duck away into any other doorways because they're in a blocked hallway. They can try and strafe but you have a clear shot at the monster and they didn't even know you were going to come there. It's much more difficult to ambush a monster when they're in a room because there are lots of objects for them to hide behind. Something that I see way too often and usually comes to the detriment of the team is that whenever you vanquish a monster by destroying one of their sigmas, usually survivors will then go to a healing station or to a crafting station nearby or in some cases pick up someone who was just around the area on the ground where they just killed the monster. This is a big no-no. In almost every situation I've seen this ever happen, the monster usually just spawns on top of the person who was on the ground or spawns next to one of the crafting stations or healing stations and just instantly knocks somebody else down and then they can knock the next person down too because they were also in the area. So if the monster has been vanquished then you should probably go and find somewhere that's a little less predictable for the monster to predict that you'll appear there and work out where the monster is by listening to the tape sound that will happen when they appear once again and then you can go towards the crafting station or the healing station or the survivor on the ground if you think they are safe. This is probably the most important tip and I feel like in lower tiers as beginners usually underutilize this ability and this can be probably the biggest detriment that you'll ever have as a survivor team because if you don't ping your location 
then the monster will be able to easily go around wherever they want to and get people down without the rest of the team even knowing that they were chasing someone properly. Yes, there are little icons at the bottom left that can tell you when someone is in a chase, but you don't know where they are. And especially if you haven't learned the map, the names that appear underneath the characters won't mean anything to you. So pinging your location is incredibly important, especially if you are being chased and pinging it constantly means that they can know which direction you're heading in so the rest of your team can then help you by ambushing the monster that is chasing you. If you are crafting something in the crafting station then that was also very useful because teammates can make sure to avoid the crafting station if you're not done yet with the weapon or head towards that station if they're being chased and they know that you've got a weapon nearly done. Pinging locations of the monster especially if you're hiding and you know where they are is really really good and just as well pinging things like the book of the dead and any other key items is also really important. Everyone is really obsessed with using weapons to kill monsters but you're actually missing one of the most important things that weapons can be used for. Weapons aren't just used for killing, you can use them to escape if you think you can lead them to another teammate. You can use weapons to escape. When you hit a monster with a weapon, they actually get slowed down considerably. And although this does sort of stagger you, you do get the advantage of being able to move faster and react faster to moving than the monster does in this situation. Especially with weapons like the sword, the cursed sword, this can give you tons of time as the monster is still trying to go through this big line of light that you just blasted at them and continue kiting, hit them with another sword and then transition again. And this can give you a lot more time. This is especially important if you think you can lead them to another teammate that might have a weapon prepared because even if you use up all of the charges on your weapon you'll be leading them right into a trap then you'll be able to eliminate the monster by, by destroying one of their stigmas but even if you can't confirm that kill this can just give you this extra time to be able to kite get to a window or maybe just transition away and hide or possibly just make the monster give up on you completely if you're worried about which character you should play or which abilities you should unlock then i recommend that you master one character and complete the their acts, at least at the beginning. By completing one of these characters' acts, you'll unlock all of those perks that that character has onto other characters as well, meaning that they'll have access to it, helping you to be able to progress a new character that you haven't played before much faster than you did with your first character that you unlocked. This will make it easier for later characters that come out in the game when you want to learn them because they have cool perks too, and it will help you just survive in general when you're learning them. Not to mention you also get a lot of items on the way there and you get to master a character and learn the character really really well. Everyone knows about chompy bars and pop cans but do you use them and do you pick them up? Most beginners will say no. Well it's really important to grab these items as they are some of the most powerful items in the game and most players just really don't utilize them properly. Chompy bars will give you more survivability since it gives you more base health and pop cans if used correctly can completely ruin a chase for a monster because they just completely lose you as you speed away. This can be even better than taking a weapon to help you kite since you can actually transition further away and chompy bars can just completely turn the match around as you now have more time and more hits that you can take. Make sure to go and pick those up from vending machines or find them around the map if you can because they are probably the best usage of your time when you're in mid to end game. Interested in seeing me playing other asymmetrical games? Well here's a video that you should watch if you want to see that.